from kicking a lieutenant without any guilt please talk to me about what's going on the to treating an fbi agent so badly that he ends up at the hospital call 911 I need a medical attention right now. These are five moments when arresting FBI agents have gone wrong. Disclaimer, all content in this video is for general educational purposes only. On December 5th, 2020, two officers with the Windsor Police Department pulled over a black Chevy Tahoe because they didn't see a plate number. U.S. Army Lieutenant Karen Nazario was behind the wheel of his brand new car when he noticed a police car behind him. Nazario reduced his speed and searched for a well-lit area to park. He eventually spotted a gas station and pulled to a stop. Then the screams began. Driver, roll the window down! Felony traffic stop. Put your hands out the window! Nazario was surprised by both the outbursts and the show of force, but he remained calm, turned on his camera, and put his hands outside the car as they ordered. Let me see your hands! How many occupants are in the vehicle? What's going on? How many occupants are in your vehicle? It's only myself. Why are your weapons drawn? What's going on? Still confused about why he was stopped so violently, at least the officers would see his uniform and relax a little. Plot twist, they didn't. Open the door slowly and step out. Open the door. After shouting a few more instructions, the officers screamed at him to get out of the car. Open the door slowly and get out. Get out of the car now. Open the door and get out of the car. Nazario would not move. Open the door! I'm not getting out the vehicle. What's going on? Get out the car! Open the door slowly and get out! Open the door What's going on? Get out of the car! Now! He continued asking what was happening, but none of them replied. When he told them he was serving in the military, one officer even gave a snarky retort. Get out of the car now! I'm serving this country and this is how I'm treated. Yo, what? Guess what? I'm a veteran too. I'm an LB. Get out of the car! What's going on? Get out of the car now! Ignoring all his questions about what was happening, the officers approached him with their guns pointed at him. Get out of the car! Sir, just get out the car! Work with us and we'll talk to you! Get out the car! You received an order! Obey it! They demanded that he get out of the car, but Nazario was scared stiff. I'm... I'm, a, I'm honestly afraid to get out. Can I yeah, you, actually you go? Get out! The shouts continued, with one of the officers attempting to pull open the doors. Yeah, dude, you should be. Get out. Nazario's hands remained outside of the window all this time, and he continued to calmly ask what he'd done and read out his rights. What's Get going out. on? What Get did I do? Get out now! I have not committed any crimes. You're being stopped for a crime violation. You're not cooperating at this point right now? The officer, on the other hand, was far from calm. You're under arrest for a traffic. You're being detained, okay? He tried to grab Nazario's hands through the window. You're being detained for, for a traffic, traffic violation. I do not have to get out the vehicle. You haven't even told really? me why I'm being stopped. Really? Get your get, hands Get out of the car now. Get out of the car. Get your hands off me, get please. Out. Get your hands off me. You know what? Get your hands off me. Then he got out his pepper spray and repeatedly sprayed him in the face. Get your problem. hands off me. Back up, I didn't do anything. Don't do that. Sir, get out of the car now. Do that. Hey, Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. I'm trying to talk to you. Okay. I'm trying to I'm, talk to you. Just get relax. out of the car. Can you please get relax? Out. Can get you out. please relax? Get out of the car right I, now. I'm actively serving this country, and this is how you're going to treat me? I didn't do anything. Whoa, hold on. What's going on? Hold on. Watch. Watch it. Nazario was already incapacitated. It could barely open his eyes, but the orders continued. Listen, take off your seatbelt and get out of the car. He even refused to help him out of the seatbelt. Oh, hands are out. Take your seatbelt off and get out of the car. Hands are out. Don't reach in there, Daniel. Don't reach in there. My hands are out, please. Take your seatbelt off. What are you, a specialist corporal? What are you? I'm a lieutenant. Lieutenant, get out of the car. Take your seatbelt off and get out of the car. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Get on the ground, on the ground now. Get on the ground and you're getting sprayed again. Get on the ground. When Nazario finally got out of the car, one of the officers began to kick at him. Can you please talk to me about what's going on? Get on the ground. Get on the ground now. And force him to the ground, trying to get him on all fours. At the same time, Nazario continued to ask what he had done. 
please talk to me about what's going on. Can you please talk to me about what's yes, going sir. on? Can you please talk to me about what's going on? Once Nazario was handcuffed, the older officer, Joe Gutierrez, demanded to know why he hadn't stopped when he tried to pull him over. Why did you just do I was that? No, you weren't. You were not. My partner put his blue lights on. Yes. You didn't yes. stop. Nazario didn't have a good reason not to stop. I was pulling over to a well lit area for my safety and yours. I have respect for law enforcement. No, you don't. It's no, you don't. No. Wrong answer, sir. If you did, we would not be in this situation right now. And you refused. You said, no, I'm not getting out of the car. I was asking what was going on. My hands are out the window. And we told you it was a traffic stop, and you refused to comply. Yep, all of this was over a traffic stop because they hadn't seen a plate number. You know, the temporary one pasted at the back window of his car. Gutierrez claimed the situation had only escalated because Nazario didn't step out of his car. Coming here was not the problem. That was not the problem. The problem is when you refuse to get out of the car. Okay? You refuse to get out of the car totally ignoring the fact that they pulled up there with their guns drawn. Once Gutierrez realized their error, he didn't make an apology. All right, how's your eyes doing, Kevin? You better. And I keep calling you a kid, I told you I'm a veteran, I respect rank, okay? I was a freaking, I was a corporal in the Marine Corps. I respect rank. However, I do have a job to do, okay? Instead, he made a veiled threat at Nazario. Well, if you plan on making us a uh, career or even six years or whatever, it's up to you, I don't care. There's no need getting this on your record telling him that they would look away if he ignored everything that had just happened and didn't press charges. However, to tell it to you, if you want to fight it and argue, I mean, and I don't mean that disrespectfully, okay? I mean, you have that right as a citizen. If that's what you want, we'll charge you, have you go to court, notify the command, do all that, or we can take, the, take time out of our night, which is not a problem. We get on, we're being paid to take care of people, okay? You know, because police officers are usually very understanding. If, if you want to just chill, let this go, and no charges filed, we'll take the handcuffs off, we'll get your bottle of water to drink on, and sit here until you feel comfortable driving. All right? Nazario was free to go, and no charges were filed against him. Then, four months later, the video went viral, and Gutierrez was fired. Yeah, Nicole, several people said that they are furious at the way those officers treated uh, Army 2nd Lieutenant Karan Nazario, but some said they are even more upset with how long it took for town officials to take action. The police chief made a statement about the incident, but it did not go down well with the public. You know, Lieutenant Nazario took certain actions that created where we, we got to, um, and, and I think that, you know, we'll, we'll, let the, uh, we'll let the court sort that part of it out and litigate that part and they were soon calling for his job. It's time for a change, and we're gonna fight to see until we see some differences. Lieutenant Nazario later filed a million dollar lawsuit against both officers. After watching all this over a mere traffic stop, the jury awarded Nazario just under $4,000 for punitive damages and compensation. Cops are human after all, and sometimes you can't blame them for making mistakes. But mistaking an agent for a criminal, that's where you need to draw the line. Okay, no, you are wrong. But before that, meet ATF agent James Burke, who went to a home in Columbus, Ohio, to retrieve a weapon from someone who wasn't authorized to own it. Burke knocked on the door, but the man refused to talk to him and called 911. 911 said, what's when officers Joseph Fine and Kevin Winchell showed up, Burke immediately let them know that he was with the FBI. Hey, turn around, let me see your hands. Turn around, let me see your hands. Okay, let me see your hands. But things quickly escalated from there. I need to see some ID, get on the ground! Get on the ground now! Get on the ground! What's your deal? Get on the ground now! But it looks like Fine just isn't convinced that Burke is telling the truth about his identity. I'm a federal agent. I'm Why wouldn't you show me your ID when I got here? Don't move forward, okay. Burke. You didn't ask for it. Three, three, Get five, on the nine, ground, nine, we'll nine, figure nine, it out. Nine. While Agent Burke repeatedly lets the cop know that he is in fact a federal agent, the back and forth just keeps going on for a while. Why do you gotta make this harder than it is? Listen, I'm not getting I have no I have no if problem making this. Yes, one, two, three, 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 You're the overreacting. I'm not overreacting. But when Joseph's partner Kevin Winchell shows up as a backup, things start getting even more aggressive. Kiss your hands up! Sir! 
Get on the ground. Face down. On the ground. Face, face down. down now. Face down. You are one of the best. Face down now. All the way down. All the way. While it's clear that Burke isn't resisting, the officers are extremely violent as they handcuff him. Burke keeps begging him to take his license out of his pocket, but the cops don't seem to care at that point. Please help me. Sir, please get my my federal credit. No, don't do that, please. The officers then force Burke to sit up, which is when they finally start looking for his ID. But once again, the situation only escalates from there. No, you're, you're the, the one, one that's wrong. wrong, sir. Once the officers take a look at Burke's ID, they start questioning him about his supervisors. I'm with you, God, for Christ's sake. sake. Get away, Who's your, Who's your supervisor? supervisor? What's, your What's your supervisor's name? name? What's your supervisor's name? Hang on a second. But instead of letting him go after that, they continue to harass him. Get in the car. Get in the car. Sir, sir. Sir. Just get in the car! Burke then tries to calmly talk to the cops, explaining his side of the story and his medical condition. No, I was trying to give you my creds! You no, didn't let me show them to you! never once tried. I did! Get wait, in the car! Wait, wait, wait! Now! Have a seat! Please! Wait, I gotta breathe! Okay, Please, you sir, can let me sit breathe. down and breathe! Let me breathe! But they just want to force him into the car. Sir, get your legs in. I need air. Sir, please call an ambulance. I'm asking for an ambulance. You got a medic coming. Get in the car. Sir, I don't need the medic. The, the taser didn't bother. You just said call an ambulance. You don't I, need I, the yeah, no, you don't want one. Get in the car. Get in the car. Get all the way in. I can't I'll go around. breathe. I'll go while Mr. Burke keeps resisting the two officers, they do everything they can to restrict him and make sure he stays in the vehicle. Let's keep him coming. Wait, how did we this happen? Okay, okay, okay. You're an idiot. We're crying out the fear of cops. You had an No way. I'm tearing you? your my head up. The seatbelt's in place. Please. After all that, the officers call for backup to confirm whether or not Burke really is a federal agent. If he is an actual police officer, he ought to be ashamed of himself. Sir, I'm not a You're not. You're right. You're not. Yeah. Once all is said and done, it's confirmed that Mr. Burke is, in fact, a real FBI agent, resulting in his immediate release. Oh, that sure would have made it easier. I didn't even realize I had it on. After that, Burke filed a lawsuit against the two cops, accusing him of using excessive force against him while he was in his official working capacity. Not even FBI agents are above the law, but you have to wonder why these two cops decided to mess around with someone who wasn't even guilty. Okay, I'm not standing up. Listen, I'm not under arrest. I don't have a warrant. In June of 2019, a man was sitting outside a bar in Rochester, Minnesota, smoking, when officers with the Rochester Police Department accosted him. You're being your racial force, bro, am I? Yeah, you're wrong. You're assuming I'm someone that I'm not. They were convinced he was the person they were looking for, but the man was sure he wasn't and asked them to leave. Hey, that's you're not harassing me. Harassing? Yes, you are. No, no, no. He's harassing me. Why are you harassing me? You're assuming I'm someone I'm not. Then the officers told him they would hold him because, as the officer said, he thought he was suspicious. No, 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 no. I'm free to go, okay? Us. Am I being detained? Yeah, you are. For what? Because I think you have more. You think? Yeah. That's an illusion. That's, that's an illusion. You think? think. Things hit the fan when the officer suddenly ordered him to stand up and told him he was under arrest. Stand up your hands. Oh, oh. I'm not here. For what? I don't have hey, a horse. You're very wrong. Guy. Guy. You're very wrong. The man kept repeating that the officer was wrong, but the officer wouldn't listen. Instead, he said, if you're wrong, you're wrong. Okay, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. No, you are wrong. Just the kind of assurance you want to hear from an officer of the law. The man remained adamant that they had the wrong guy. No, you are wrong. What do you mean if you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Then another officer joined the fray and grabbed at him. Oh, no, 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 hold on, hold on. You guys are not gonna try to admit him to the person. Trying to wrestle the man down while the man protested his innocence and even asked why they were hassling him. 
I'm not under arrest. I didn't do nothing. Bad. For what? For what? Did you tell me for what? Instead of answering, they pulled at him and forced him into cuffs. Can I get your card? Can I get your card? Yep, okay. Uh, okay. I'm not standing up. Listen, I'm not under arrest. I don't have a warrant. I don't have any officers. Officers. Hey, yo. Hey, 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 hey. hey, hey. Angrily, he told him to look at his ID. Matter of fact, matter of fact, look at my ID. But the two were too concerned about making their arrest. Oh, we you guys, guys are the wrong thing. You guys are. Well, they want to get tough. Finally, they went into his back pocket for his ID. No, don't hate me. Look at it. Don't oh, what does that say? What does that say? Oh. Wrong guy. Oh. Wrong guy. They took one look at it, and then they did a complete 180. If this was a cartoon, these officers' faces would be white as snow. Wrong guy. Oh. Wrong guy. Wrong guy. Oh my god. Wrong guy. No, get the f off me, dude. He tried apologizing, but the man was livid and called for their supervisor. I need our cars. I need your supervisor over here. Call your supervisor. Seconds later, a sergeant strolls into view. I need your supervisor right here. Supervisor right here. Sir, can you please tell me, are you the supervisor? The man made a complaint. He wanted everybody's cards. So, I need their cards, I need your card, I need your card. The officer who had led this witch hunt was now chastened and mute. Cut from the same cloth, the sergeant excused their actions and played it down. No, this is the people. Yes, I'm the people. You guys are people. So, I would like, I would like, come on, baby, come on. He got all their cards, and these inept officers continued to back up their actions. Assume yeah, out someone and try to... Right, and he made a mistake, really? and then once he figured out who no. you were, he unhandcuffed him. What if somebody did that to you? Going to jail. No. What if somebody did that to you? I was going to tell anyways. Instead of tucking their tails in at making such an embarrassing mistake, these idiots were still determined to have the last word. So if you want to make a complaint, so, yeah. you will make it. I will make a so, complaint. Right. Believe me, I will. I will make a complaint on all three of you guys. That's fine. As far as they were concerned, nobody died, so it didn't matter. So you guys can make a mistake and kill someone and be like, oh, well, uh, you don't give a wrong answer. No, we got to make that time. How do you know? This kid turned out, somebody could have killed or no? Nobody did. Somebody could have died. Nobody did. Nobody did. Nobody did. Nobody did. Nobody did. At least no one got hurt at the bar. But you can't say the same for this next FBI agent who had to deal with some pretty rough cops. Call 911. Call, I need a medical attention right now. This is Special Agent Alexis Hatton, who ended up locked in the backseat of a Florida cop car. But how did this happen? Let's rewind. In December of 2019, real estate agent Marilyn Bean was involved in an accident and issued a ticket by Deputy Rolf Gordon. But all of a sudden, the prosecution dismissed the charge and the ticket was never even entered into the court system. That's when Gordon received a strange call from someone claiming to be an FBI agent, asking him to come to a parking lot for a meeting. Of course, Gordon had his reservations. It's okay. Special agent Hatton. The FBI. Okay. You got that on body cam? I do, but I don't understand what the problem is with you meeting me at the office. The officer starts getting a little more suspicious when this FBI agent asks him to turn his body cam off. I'll talk to the U.S. Attorney's Office about it. You can cut off the reporting device now. Okay. Well, I will when I leave the area, sir. Hey, TJ, this guy is uh, telling me to turn my body camera off and telling me he's going to contact other people to get involved with this. Let me get his tag number real quick. It's going to be... LKST57. The man in the car was Agent Alexis Hatton, who was there to investigate the citation that Deputy Gordon himself had issued as part of an ongoing FBI inquiry about public corruption. And that is when Gordon starts getting suspicious. I do feel like I'm being detained. Am I being detained? Am I being detained? You're the one who called me here, sir. How yeah. did you get my phone number? I can't give you that information. I say he can't tell me how he got my information. Agent Hatton cooperates with the deputy every step of the way, reassuring him that there was nothing to be scared of. Hey, I don't think this guy is legit, man. Here, man. Take my weapon off, okay? 26 Franklin. I'm, I'm not, not, not going to put you in cuffs. Present here for weapon. this call. Where is that? He's got detained. The agent then makes a call to his department, just to prove to the deputy that the investigation he's conducting is in fact legitimate. Eventually, multiple officers from the Franklin County Sheriff's Office show up at the scene, and Agent Hatton is then suddenly arrested. Sorry, I'm going, bro. Okay, arrested. Okay, okay. Like that. All right. When the agent asks what he's being charged for, the officers try to make up reasons on the spot, even going so far as to say that he's coming back on the terror watch list, which obviously isn't true. What's the charge, bro? You don't have any yet, You're but right now we're running sir. you through multiple federal databases. Yeah. 
Okay, nobody's coming up with your name. You also come back on a terror watch list. So we're gonna secure you for our protection and yours. We're gonna put you in the back of a police car. Where, where's that weapon at, sir? It's on, it's on my right side. The cop forces Hatton into the back of a police car, and almost immediately, he starts feeling uncomfortable. Uh, it's it's on top of you. Come over here. And that jacket. Ten more people gonna transfer to you, sir. Claiming that the officer had deliberately turned up the heat. Yes, sir. There, brother. Okay, okay. All right, I'm turning it on right brother, now. Open the door. I can't breathe. Sir, I can't open the door. You're brother. being detained right now. While all that's going on, the deputy receives a call from his office that completely changes the game. Uh, uh, this is on the Panama City District. I'm on the phone with his supervisor. Uh, he, is, he is legit. So we can hold on. So they just said. All right, that's what I'm doing right now. They just called back. Sure, What's he doing here? He is legit. When it's finally confirmed that Hatton is indeed a real FBI agent, the cops quickly pull him out of the car. Call 911. Call. I need a medical attention right now. Call, call 911. Agent Hatton then had to be rushed to the hospital, where he was thankfully able to recover. After the entire situation, Franklin County Sheriff A.J. Smith had a conversation with Hatton's supervisor, admitting that the officers needed training to make both agencies work better together. Sometimes you can tell that the cops are hoping to get away with something even when they know what they're doing is wrong. So when things don't go that way with this next person, the officer was left fuming. So, okay, so if I hand you your stuff, you'll be fine and taken off and you're not angry, right? Meet Mac Proctor, an undercover agent who knows a thing or two about the law. So, when a corrupt police officer pulls him over for no reason... All right, Mr. Proctor, everything okay? Do I need to answer any of your questions? You don't have to answer anything, do okay. you? Okay. Um, you don't have to. Lucky you stand here all day. Proctor knows exactly how to deal with the situation. Can you go ahead and finish your job stand. so I can carry on? What's up with the anger, dude? I'm not angry. You're not angry? And you always talk to everybody like that? I'm, I'm not angry. Oh, okay. I just want you to go ahead and wrap things up, please. Oh, okay. The cop is immediately agitated when he realizes that he can't wrongfully detain Mr. Proctor since he actually knows his rights. Well, do you understand? Am I being detained? Yes, you are. Okay. All right. So do you understand why I stopped you? Do I need to answer any no, more you of your questions? I'm, you don't have to. Okay. Mr. Proctor wants this situation over with as soon as possible, but the cop clearly wants to keep him there. Mr. Proctor, would you like to leave? Do I need to answer any more no, of your questions? No, no, no. I'm not the one that's acting this way, okay? I'm just asking you to do, you know, you know, I'm trying to give you a break here, all right? I prefer you just write me the parking ticket and let you me go. Write, okay, oh, okay. Max sits and waits in his car while the officer comes back, letting him know that another cop will be coming to assess the situation. Right in front of the Hawaiian, um, down the driving, right? Of, uh, yeah. When the officer shows up, Proctor still refuses to answer any questions or have any conversations. I'm sorry, I'm sure you're a nice guy. I'm not in the mood to have conversation. Since he knows that it's the only way for the officers to rile him up even more. Hopefully I'm not keeping you from anything, am I? I don't like talking to him. The final straw is when the officer actually accuses Mr. Proctor of having psychological issues in an attempt to create a scene. Is everything okay? Is there any other issues or anything going on? Do I should know? Do I need to answer your questions? I don't have to answer anything. I'm concerned about your well-being. Is there something wrong? But Proctor knows that this is just a way for the officer to assert his power, so he refuses to engage. I could be having my lunch right now. You do. The officer keeps Mr. Proctor there for a really long time until he finally tries to provoke Mac one last time. Hey, Mr. Proctor, can I just give you your stuff so you can leave? Can you? I can, but you're the one. I would have let you go a long time ago. I'll what do you. I need to do for you to hand me my documents so I'll I can leave? I'll give it to you right now. I just want to know that you know, so you're okay because usually I don't get people all this. What do I need to do for you to hand me my documents so I can be on my way? You're okay. I don't need to answer any of your questions. Jeez, there we go again. Jesus Christ. But that is when Mac really gives him a piece of his mind. I'm trying to say that... Uh, You're trying to display your power to me no, right now. I'm concerned about it. Is there a problem to be concerned about another human being? 
You okay. have no reason to be concerned about me. So it's okay then. You're okay then. You can hand me my documents and I can be on my fine. way. Or we can... Fine. Okay. Thankfully, the officer hands Mac his documents back and he can be on his way, not letting the cop win this power play.